Hey, what's up, Scott Balkum here, and I'm with Kessler Crane today, and we're going to go over some tips and practical use cases with the brand new CineShooter Remote V2 app. Now, before we start, if you haven't already watched the overview video from Kessler, starring Kessler, make sure to watch it first because, well, it's important. Now, to get the best performance from your head, you'll want to tweak the motor settings for your use case. Now, think of the Cine Shooter as a dancer. You may want the dancer to perform ballet or pop and lock, and the size and weight of your payload must be taken into consideration when adjusting these settings. If you have a large, heavy payload, inertia may come into play and create an undesired result. You can't outsmart science but you can adjust some parameters to work with it. Now, as we go through the pages, I'll point to where we could tweak some of the settings for your performances to get those desired results. So let's jump into the V2 app. Now I'm connected right here with Wi-Fi, as you can see at the bottom, the Wi-Fi indicator is red, indicating that it is connected. Any access that's online will be white and any that is offline will be gray. Now this first page is the setup page. It's not for performances, it's for, well, setting up keyframes. So motor tweaking in here is for safety and flexibility. Let's jump in on our first tip. You can now access the individual motor settings by clicking the specific axis at the bottom. For each motor, there are two adjustments we may want to tweak. Let's start with the pan motor. And uh, in here, you'll notice there are setup and move settings. We only really need to concern ourselves with the setup settings at this point. The motors have a maximum RPM and that they can operate, and you can adjust this to your needs. Now, I'd highly recommend you run your setup speeds between 10 and 40% of maximum speed. In most cases, this will be from about 1,500 RPMs to, say, about 4,000. The main reason is safety. When you're first setting up your moves, well, you want to move slowly and cautiously through your space to make sure you can perform with, without hitting anything. So adjusting the max RPMs to something like 1,500 to 4,000 is well, really nice and safe for you to program your move. You can, of course, adjust these to your preference. Now, setup damping is, well, it's the acceleration curve. A large damping percentage will be a nice, smooth, gradual acceleration, where zero is well, like a drag race, being able to accelerate as quickly as the motor can go. Now, in setup, having between... 90 and 100% is actually desirable here as it will smooth out your finger movements when using the joystick or sliders. So let's set that to 99 and we're going to go through each one of these and make sure that it is set appropriately. Slide, yep, good. All right, we, we can always go back and adjust as needed. Now, on the setup page, you can move the sliders back and forth and... Uh, yeah, they moves the axis. But you can also tap a little arrow next to that axis, and it will move the axis in a pre-configured small amount, which I'll show you in a moment. If you hold your finger down on the arrow, it will move the axis at a configured percentage of max setup speed. Now, tapping the little gear next to the slider or the joystick will allow you to adjust these two configurations. You can see the tap rotations right here and hold speed. If you click on tap rotations, you can see just how much the motor will turn for each tap. And you can use this for precise lining up of shots. And then the hold speed is the maximum percentage of setup speed. Now, adjust it for your comfort, but don't go too far. These, these are micro adjustments. The sliders on the setup page are for the large adjustments. Now, down towards the bottom left, the gear icon, you can adjust which axis is on the joysticks as well as configure how the joystick responds to your fingers with a dead band and a movement curve. Now, if you want to be able to manually move you with fine adjustments, you might configure, say, a 10 to 20% dead band and, say, a log or log two response curve. Log one is a response curve that moves the motor slowly at first and then gradually faster and faster as you move towards max speed. Log two is even more gradual. Using either of these will help you guide your axis gracefully to the desired position. Now, down on the bottom right, 
you will see the game controller config. And this is like the previous version. You can assign any action to any button or no action at all. It's, it's great to configure your joystick for normal speed moves and your D-pad to do bump moves. This will allow a lot of fine control at your fingertips. Also, use the trigger buttons for the slide. There's also a new action, and that's full speed motors. Uh, sometimes when you're setting up moves, you just need a burst of speed to get from point A to point B, and that's where this comes in. Configure it to a little use button on your controller, and then that way, when you need the burst of speed, just move your joystick over and then hold down the button, and off it goes. I programmed it here to the options button, so we will just move uh, over here, and then I hold it down, and away it goes. Now, be sure to let off the button with enough room to stop because, you know, it it can get a little, little fast on you there. <laughs> now let's program a quick move. Move the head around to the desired position and then tap record keyframe. Let's just set this up real quick. And we'll go down. That looks about right. We're going to record a keyframe right here, and then we're going to slide over. And we will go this way. Yep, that should work right there. And we'll record a keyframe. Now you can see the counter, it goes from zero to one of 12 or two of 12, and you notice you now get 12 keyframes. Now continue to program all your keyframes until they're programmed in as you would, as many as you like. Let's jump over to the view keyframes and you'll see the keyframes that I've programmed in already. They're highlighted red. To go to that keyframe, tap the keyframe you want and uh, City Shooter is off. Once there, you can move, replace, delete, label, delete all keyframes, or even take a photo of the keyframe simply by holding down the keyframe until the menu pops up. If you wanna move a keyframe, choose move keyframe, you'll see the little dots on the bottom right hand corner and you can drag these around as you want. You, it's very simple. Now keep in mind, they will retain their original name. So if you have keyframe one and you move it to Keyframe 2, it's still going to be named Keyframe 1. And that's just something to keep in mind. Now, taking a photo is a great way to remind you of the shot each keyframe is programmed for. To take a photo, simply hold your finger down, choose Take Photo for Image, and then use your camera. Put your camera right where the lens is and snap a picture. And then when you're done, you can choose use photo and you're good. Uh, we want to do another one. Let's do take photo or image. Now you can see the two shots that we have that are representative of the keyframes that we have. So now it's just an easy way for you to see what that shot was. And that comes in really handy when you have 12. Now this is also a great time for us to talk about the mini event mode. If you slide the toggle over to mini event, you can configure a transition time anywhere from zero to 30 seconds. So this is the time it will take from moving from whatever keyframe you're on to the new keyframe. So we're on this keyframe right here and we want to go to the new keyframe, we tap it, and we'll see this will move over eight seconds. But if you need to speed it up, you can actually slide it while you go. And that way, if you have like a 30 second, nice little slow transition, and something's happening, you need to just get there faster, tap on it, then slide it over, and you know, away you go. But it's a quick and easy way to set up a bunch of different shots when you need Cine Shooter to be, well, that extra cameraman out there in the wild. Now let's head back to the setup page. Now, emulation mode, well, it's, it's a quick little way for you to move the pan and tilt axis using your phone. 
To use it, hold your finger on the emulation mode and move your phone, twisting side to side or tilting up and down. Now, quick note, the movements are based on how you move your phone, based on the orientation of your phone from the moment you hold down the button. So if you have your phone facing down and you hold down the button, you'll begin adjustments from there. So it's best to align your phone as you want to see it and then hold down your button. That way it doesn't become confusing. And emulation mode should be used slowly until you get the hang of it. Now let's slide or tap over to Live Motion and see what's new here. There is a new scrub at the bottom, so you can quickly see how your move performs over the entire performance, stopping where you need it to. And the scrub slider turns into a progress bar when you actually perform your move. Now you can configure your move time with the first button right here, and it shows you what the slowest axis is right down here at the bottom. So you can make your move faster if you need to, and you'll know which axis to adjust. Just configure the time that you want, and uh, yeah, just click Done. Tapping on Ramping allows you to fine tune how the motors accelerate and decelerate from one keyframe to the next. Now, the higher the ramping, the slower the acceleration. And keep in mind, the higher the ramping, the longer the minimum move time might be as well. So set the ramping to, say, 100%. And then we we'll go over here and we can see now that the minimum move time is 20 seconds and the slowest axis is the slider at 20 seconds. So here, if we need a little extra speed, but we like that 100% ramping, we can now go down to the individual axis. And this time we're gonna go to the slider because it's the slowest and we can change the max move speed. And if we change it to say 10,000, now our minimum move time is now 10.3 seconds, so we can now adjust this down to, say, 10.5. So now we've adjusted both the ramping and the speed to get that performance that we want. Now some tips. If you have a heavy payload, like a really large cinema camera, you may notice that if you try to perform a move quickly with little damping, the motor will move rapidly, but the mass of the rig itself may not respond quite as quick as the motor. Science calls this inertia. Well, what we see is a jerky stop and start to our move. So if you want smooth movements, you need to tweak the ramping and or the max move speed to alleviate that desired effect. Now, after a few adjustments, you'll begin to understand the effect and you'll have an idea of where to ballpark that, those settings in the future and it'll just make it a lot easier for you. On the live motion page, the delay is a great way to settle the camera down after hitting record before moving. You could configure this at two to three seconds. There's plenty of time for the camera to settle down. You could also use it to delay the start for, well, any other reason, up to 24 hours. For instance, if you want to film bats coming out at sunset and you can't be around to hit record, just configure the delay to start just before sunset and let her rip. Well, time-lapse mode is virtually unchanged from the previous version. We still have our move time here that is calculated based upon the ramp time and the exposure. And we can set up our ramping here. So if we'd like to have a simple, very little ramp, uh, we're going to take five photos, and here in the delay, you can set it to any number you want. We'll just leave it at two, and then your exposure time is how long the exposure is going to be. It's going to be a minimum of one second for each just because it needs time to move anyway. So we'll just set up this shot, and away we go. Two-second countdown, and here's frame one. It's going to move. Frame two. It's going to move. Frame three. Four and five. And you notice that the scrub changed to a progress bar just like in live motion. Now, time-lapse mode still has a ton of great configurable options. To access them, click on Setup at the bottom. Where the normal time-lapse page is basically a summary with limited changeable settings, the Setup page gives you everything. And I mean everything. You need to perform the time lapse that you want. Here you have the exposure and delay settings as before, but you can see and change all the settings that can affect your individual time lapse. It has a time lapse calculator built in, which is really powerful. 
it lets you calculate a specific parameter by adjusting known parameters. Let's say you only have three minutes to run a time lapse. You know your finished project should be played back in 23.976 frames per second, and you'd like to know how many photos you'll need to capture or what the runtime is for the final product. Or what would happen if you change the exposure? All of this can easily be calculated here. Switch from time to photos in the calculated field, and then you can input a total time for the time lapse. It will calculate how many photos you'll be capturing and the resulting runtime. So if I only have, let's say, three minutes to do this entire thing, all of a sudden it's going to say, yep, you need to take 60 photos. You can also change your exposure and delay to see how they affect it. You can do the same with delay or with time. Let's say you want four seconds of finished time lapse, but you don't want to immediately start moving at the beginning of it or have it in while it's still moving. You'll want to configure, say, two frames on either side. Go down to clip length, change that to four seconds, and then set a pre and post move photos to two photos each. And now it'll tell you the total number of photos you'll be taking and how long the total time lapse will take to capture. Now, in addition, you could change from shoot, move, shoot to continuous motion on this page. Now, continuous motion would be for when you want motion blur from the move itself to show up in the time lapse. Shoot, move, shoot will do just like it says. It will shoot a frame, then move, then shoot the next frame. You can also tell the app that you're using an external intervalometer and even test fire your camera. And when you're ready, click done and play. Stop motion. It works similar to time-lapse mode with the addition of a trigger button and a forward and reverse frame so you can go back and reshoot should you need to. You can set up the number of frames, add a delay, and uh, then your exposure. Let's just do this. We're going to take five photos, not a hundred. Let's, let's do 12. We're on current photo one. Uh, the exposure is going to be one second. So we're gonna click home. It takes us to the original. And we're going to hit our first one. We're going to advance to position two. And you notice that it moved. We're gonna move her head ever so slightly. Snap a picture. Move to three. Move it again. And our final shot. And let's watch it played back. Yep, pretty simple, <laughs> but you get the idea. A couple of other cool features of the stop motion page is the auto advance feature. When you turn it on, it will automatically advance to the next frame and wait for you to capture after each capture. And if you missed a frame, you can click on the go to at the bottom, put in the frame number you want, press done, and it just zooms right over to that page. Pretty easy. Now on the last page, manual move, this is where you can move the city shooter in a manual performance. Now ideally here, you'll want to set a max speed around 15% and you're damping at 100%. This will give you nice gentle movements with the joysticks and sliders. So we have 100% and 15, so now we can and you can manually perform your city shooter how you'd like. And you can, of course, use the Xbox or PlayStation 4 controller to add a little more flexibility, but right out of the gate, V2 packs a lot of power in a simple and easy to use app. So that's it. That's the overview of the V2 app. And when you're ready to unlock more powerful motion control, Kessler offers Chaos, the full featured motion control platform on PC, Mac, and iPad. And if you have any questions about the app or any other Kessler gear, head over to KesslerCrane.com and feel free to send them a link to your BTS and finished products. They love seeing what you do with your Kessler motion control. 